those of you who are unfamiliar with process mining, I'll give a high level overview of what it is and its value. And then we'll jump into a live demo of process mining and intelligence capabilities using SAP Signavio's process intelligence. So what is process mining? Process mining is a discipline for discovering, monitoring, and improving your business processes. It's about bringing light or transparency to how your organization is really running. Process mining technologies leverage all of the data that your ERP or other core data or other core systems collect to generate meaningful business intelligence. Um, there are other capabilities out there to monitor KPIs. Um, and process mining still provides these capabilities, but it also focuses more upon delivering meaningful insights and enabling investigations into the how of your business processes. Process mining helps to dissect your business process data and identify where it diverts from standard operating procedures. It helps you to make informed decisions to prioritize and adapt as an organization so that you can overcome any process performance issues. Solutions like SAP Signavio's process intelligence help you to investigate the root cause of issues, and wherever you identify bottleneck and conformance issues, you can then prioritize and target those as areas for focused improvements or to build uh, detailed investigations to sort of support a business case. So the data-driven process discovery and deep dive deep dive analyses of your processes really drive your organization towards developing the transparency into your as-is process landscape that you really need to uh, drive targeted improvements. Uh, a clear picture of your as-is landscape allows you to strategically drive improvements um, to areas where there are performance issues uh, by considering data filters like regions, uh, functional teams, uh, individuals, etc. Um, you can really roll out improvements in a systemic fashion. Um, and as your organization becomes increasingly mature in your PM capabilities, you get actually a greater degree of uh, business value. So it sort of ramps up. Um, you know, importing a data dump in a shorter initiative uh, will provide your organization with sort of like a snapshot of your performance given a, sp a specific time frame. Um, and although this can help you to begin to identify process disconformities um, and variants that increase your cycle time, uh, the value really comes in when you start to develop your capabilities even further. Um, so once you set up a data feed uh, with a continuous inflow of data, you can start to track performance and compliance over time um, so that your organization can, can track its progress um, as you implement improvement projects um, and remedy particular areas of, uh, of, of problems. So this kind of brings you closer to a culture of end-to-end -end organizational process transparency. So we've touched a bit on the value of uh, process mining, and I hope to show you a bit more of this value more tangibly as we shift gears into SAP Signavio's process intelligence tool. So I've got Signavio Process Intelligence open in my browser right now. And we're looking at the SmartWorks Procure to Pay investigation. So this is a process investigation in the SmartWorks Process Repository. Um, SmartWorks is a fictional compressor company. Um, and the, the, this first section of the investigation is what's known as a process interview. And the first widget we're gonna take a look at is the process discovery. Here we have visible the most linear path from the start to the end of the procure to pay process. Now, if we notice on the left-hand side, there's this slider that says 11%. So what this means is that 11% of the process execution data, um, that this, this path represents only 11% of the process execution data. So that means 11% of our processes follow this sort of expected path. Now, if we slide this slider up, then we reveal a greater percentage of the data set. So now this represents really the reality of the process execution. So these are all of the different paths that individuals are taking in the procure to pay process. Um, if I now cycle, uh, change the filter to cycle time, this is where we can start to highlight some of the problem areas. So these thicker lines actually represent a greater amount of cycle time. Um, so if I zoom into, for example, uh, invoice scanned to payment completed, I can see that there's a very thick line. 
um, that indicates that this represents a uh, significant portion of the data set. So if I look over at the purchase order approved, I can see an even thicker line, 121 days and one hour. So that means 121 days and one hour of cycle time um, has been spent on this particular task. This marks a potential problem area, or at least an area that we wanna check out to see exactly why that's representing such a disproportionately large amount of the process execution time. So we've identified that the purchase order approval step is potentially problematic within the procure to pay process. And there's a lot of rework in that area. So let's take a deeper dive look and see exactly what's going on at that step. So I'm gonna scroll down to the process conformance widget. Here we can see the compliance within the process. As we click through these different variants of the process, we notice that in a lot of cases, uh, individuals are, are, are stepping over the approved purchase order step. They're skipping over that step. Um, and that's, that's reflected in two of the uh, most common process uh, variants. So let's take a look into why this might actually be the case. What's the purchase order approval turnaround time? We can use widgets like uh, graphs to represent the average cycle time uh, given specific filters. So for example, we can break down the data by company name. Um, so if we take a look at the average trend line here, we can see that Colossal Compressing, uh, Buildtopia, Smart Compressors, and some other companies kind of stand out and actually have above average cycle time. We might wonder, are there any particular PO types that represent, say, a disproportionately higher cycle time? And we can further break down the data by PO type. Um, so we can see that these uh, two particular purchase order types actually have a significantly above average uh, approval time, normal procurement flow and framework orders. So how might this high PO approval time impact your end-to-end -end procure to pay process? Accompanying this chart on the right-hand side are a series of value widgets. We can use these widgets to display performance in key areas. We can set thresholds and targets. Um, so for example, if you wanted to assess the impact of POs on cycle time, uh, we can filter out by POs which take greater than 24 hours for approval uh, to, to show those PO approvals which have a higher cycle time. Um, we can set the threshold as the average procure to pay cycle time and filter it out by those cases where the time is greater than one day. So the result of that being an increase in 26 days and 14 hours in overall cycle time, um, the end-to-end -end cycle time to pay process. We can see that a long approval time causes significant impacts on the business's procure to pay efficiency. And if I scroll back up to the top of the process investigation and take a look at the process overview, I can clearly see that there are some other potential standout or areas of interest within the process. Uh, any process variants which have thicker lines representing high execution time, um, which clearly jump around other process steps or looping arrows uh, which indicate rework would all be good starting points to launch future process investigations. Um, however, it's important to note that even at the highest level, this process explorer visual can really help us to identify what are some of the potential problem areas um, and help us to identify the most impactful tasks on our overall process execution and process cycle time. Moving now down to the bottom of the investigation, in the recommendations chapter, we can summarize our findings from the investigation and come up with logical next steps. By analyzing the procurement phases more closely, we were able to conclude that the PO approvals caused significant delay in the procure to pay process, um, especially in those approvals by Colossal Compressing, um, Smart Compressors, um, and a few other companies. Uh, we were also able to identify particular work order types such as uh, normal procurement and framework orders which had two or even three times uh, longer approval times. Based on our investigation into these areas, we determined that a strong follow-up action would be to conduct subject matter expert interviews to discover the root cause of the slow PO approval, specifically looking to those companies and order types that experienced a higher cycle time. Um, a technical assessment and an optimization effort in SAP's 
procure-to-pay configuration could also be conducted to best facilitate the procure-to-pay process, um, specifically around the PO approvals area. So hopefully you can start to see that by running process intelligence investigations, we can generate powerful fact-based insights into our organization's business processes. We can identify potential risks into our process conformance, performance, and compliance concerns, and start to compile a list of improvement opportunities as targets for continuous improvement projects. We can use these PI tools to track the changes to our business processes all throughout the transformation. Hopefully this demo helped to shed a bit of light on the potential and value of which this capability can bring to your organization. Thank you very much for listening.